everyone. This video is to show teachers a very quick overview of how to use Zoom. We're going to keep this very simple and high level. If you want to dive into all the features that Zoom has to offer, they're having a lot of free trainings right now. But this, the purpose of this video, as I said, is just to give you a quick overview so that if you're overwhelmed and feeling like, I have no idea how to do this, you can see how easily you can get up and running in about five minutes on Zoom. It's actually very, very easy. So the first thing you're going to do is go to zoom.us and you're going to enter your work email. It's very important that you use your school email address because right now Zoom is lifting. There's normally a 40 minute time limit on the free account, but they're lifting it for schools affected by coronavirus. Uh, so if you use your school email address, you can get the limit lifted. And there's this form here, we'll link to it, that you need to fill out to request that. So once you sign in, you're going to be directed to download the software onto your computer. So follow those prompts and download it onto your computer. Then you're going to come over here. You're actually going to have, this is the home screen. So if you look up here, there's home. Um, it's going to look something like this. So new meeting here is like if you're creating a meeting on the fly, like I'm, I'm, I'm just doing it right now. But what you're probably going to want to do if you want to meet with your students is you're probably going to want to schedule a meeting. So you can hit right here, schedule, and, and you could name it. You could say um, math six class. And um, you can set the time obviously right here. Meeting ID, you can just go ahead and let it generate it automatically. If you want to have a password so that only those who have a password can enter, you can do that here. That's like an added layer of protection. You may not need that, though, uh, because only people with the link can enter. Uh, but yeah, that's an extra security if you want to use that. Video, I recommend turning it on for both you and your students if you want uh, your students to be able to show video. You can turn it off if you don't want to allow that for some reason. Um, audio here, I recommend just using computer audio. The telephone options just kind of muddy the waters and we're trying to keep it simple. So just use computer audio. Um, this is an option to add it to your own calendar. So you can do that if you want and hit schedule. So it's scheduling it and it's see, it's going to pop up and ask me if I want to add it to my calendar, but I don't actually because this is just a test one. Okay, so we created the meeting. Now you want to go over here to meetings up in the top and you'll see here's our meeting right here. So the next thing we need to do is invite students to the meeting. So you can hit show meeting invitation or you can copy it here. So this is just very simple. It says what the topic is, when it is. This is what they need most. They need this URL. If your students have this URL, they can join the meeting. Um, and then the password here. If you have a password, they're obviously going to need that. So you will want to tell your students, it will take them, you know how you'll see, you have to download Zoom, they have to download Zoom onto their computer or device as well. So you might tell them, hey, you want to, you know, make sure you try out this link ahead of time and download the software. Or you can say, you know, just show up to them, show up about 10 to 15 minutes early to make sure you have time to set everything up. I'm going to show you what this meeting actually looks like though. So I'm going to hit start and here we go. This is the meeting. Uh, I'm going to join with my computer audio. If you want, the first time you do this, you might want to test your microphone. Um, it'll ask if you hear a ringtone. Um, it'll ask if you hear yourself. I have my computer muted right now so we don't get crazy feedback. But here you go. You would hit join audio, um, join with computer audio. Okay, so make sure it says you're using computer audio. You should see this going up and down. And here you can have an option to pause video if you're like, I don't want people to see me right now. I need to go grab a drink of water or whatever. And you can turn it right back on. So, And you can also mute yourself and unmute yourself. So super easy. You wouldn't necessarily need to invite people because you already have. But if you do kind of last second need to invite someone, you can do that here. Manage participants is a nice option. Uh, this is where you can mute everyone, unmute everyone. Don't you ever wish you could do that in real life? You know, just hit mute on the class. So, so you can do that online. You can hit mute so that you're the only one allowed to talk or you can unmute people. You can also mute and unmute people one at a time if you want to like have them raise hand for permission um, and then do that. So it's up to you uh, how you want to control muting and unmuting everybody. Uh, chat is an option you can have. You can like write a written message here if you want to. I'm going to come back to screen share. Record is a fantastic option. So if you hit this, it will start recording. See up here where it says recording? I'm going to stop it here because I don't actually need to double record this uh, this call. Um, but what is great about that is you can, if you're worried, if you're saying, man, I really want to connect with my class, but I feel like not everyone's going to be able to join li live, you can go ahead and plan something live and just tell them, hey, whoever can come, come. If you can't, I'll get you the video, okay? So that way you can have that connection. It's much more powerful than just teaching to an empty room. 
And then, but so you can connect with those that can come live and everyone else can watch via video. So even if you're not actually doing a lot of teaching online, you could do this once a week or twice a week with your class, depending on how many classes you have. And it would be a great way to stay connected. And like I said, also give uh, people the option to watch it recorded later. Um, final thing that I wanted to show you here is how to share your screen. So if you are doing, hold on a second, I'm going to end this. If you have like, for example, a PowerPoint that you want to share, what you're going to want to do is actually play it first before you share your screen, okay? Otherwise, it's going to show the actual PowerPoint like where you create it, okay? So you're going to hit share screen. If you're wanting to show internet, anything you want to show, you just pick here. Which screen do I want to show? Um, but here, I'm going to choose my PowerPoint and I'm going to hit share down here at the bottom. And now, this is what my students are seeing. They're seeing the PowerPoint and I can flip through it. And you know, this is a PowerPoint for an online training I'm actually doing tonight. Um, and they can see me as well. And when I'm done, I can just go here and hit stop sharing. So now it's back to just being me. All right, that's the basics. The only other thing you know, need to know is how to end the meeting. Right down here at the end, when you're done, you just simply hit end meeting. End meeting for all. And you'll see that it will start converting your recording. So it'll do it. It'll start making it. And it'll actually tell you right where it is on your computer. So here it is. Here's my video recording. It also has the audio only. So you can... Um, you can just upload that to YouTube and share it with your students as an unlisted video or whatever you want to do with it. You can upload it to your Google Classroom, whatever makes sense. So I hope you guys found this, uh, this video helpful and I just challenge you to go ahead and start it. It's actually pretty simple. Rewatch this video a couple times if you need to and you can get up and running and connect with your class.